morning all. Um, lovely to see you. Surprising to see you this fine morning. Uh, I told the other coaches this morning what we're doing. I'll tell you. Uh, our session is called Types of Argument. It's not an exciting name. It could have been called Argumentation Masterclass or How to Be the Greatest Speaker in the World. But it's just called Types of Argument. I told Jens, he said, ah yes, good arguments and bad arguments. Very good deal. What are you going to do for the other two hours? But there are in fact more types of argument than that. Um, so what the purpose of this session is, is to find out what those types are and to use that as a way of picking what to say in your debate. And also, fantastically, as a tool for analysing what other people say in the debate and finding gaps in what they've said. So if you're a second proposition or a first opposition team and you're looking for uh, guidance, what to talk about, these tools should help you today. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, let's start with the warm-up because it's early. Um, and the warm-up that we're going to start with is just to get you talking. And what I'd like you to do is get a, a scrap of paper, it doesn't have to be neat, and write down one question about something interesting in the world. One thing. It has to be something you don't know the answer to. What would you do about the problem of deforestation in Java? Um, how can we deal with extremism in uh, northern Siberia? Uh, I don't know, anything at all. Something you don't know the answer to. Just write that down. So the way you do know things, 
you can talk amazingly. So we're going to get you up here, and you're essentially going to be talking to the audience. Uh, as if you're a, a prime minister or a president or a government official, you should build yourself to be in a position of responsibility. You can choose which country or which job, whatever you like. And I'm going to ask you a question, and then you need to talk to this audience. Okay? Um, and try and talk for about a minute, if you can. Just keep going, basically, until I stop. Okay? Um, right. So, volunteer. The volunteer to come forward and be the first, uh, the first politician. Good man. Excellent. Uh, that's fine. Come here so you can face them. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, thank you for coming on the program. Can you start by telling us what are you going to do to improve the public school system in Turkey? In Turkey? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that question. And answers for that. Okay, now, as all, we all know about the problems about the public school system in Turkey. They, they lack the proper resources to get the best education they possibly can. And I, I feel that we should give them these resources. We should get them uh, the... the um, we should get them. We should get them the proper teachers they need because we all need the best teachers. We need teachers that actually care and are educated. We also need. We also need. Um, we also need, especially for the public school system, not necessarily private, but the public school system. They're, they're lacking it, and uh, also in resources such as uh, simple basic piece, piece, uh, paper and pencil. We should get them stuff like that, and also books because. How, what, how can we learn without books? Uh, I guess we can learn oratorically, but I think they could have better education with them. And we should get them updated uh, with the uh, yes, with the most with the most um, advanced research in that area, so they can be up to date with the most yeah the most current information. Also, we should. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister, thank you very much for your time. That's all we have time for. Thank you. <laughs> hey, we need we need another politician. problem in our society. So we have to think that on, on a very different and uh, different levels. The first is the security of our uh, of civilians in our country. So we must uh, protect our civilians um, uh, from the terrorists that are attacking our country, from all the people that are that are endangering our nation. So we must do that with um, we, uh, with the protections, with the uh, measures that we are doing already. And about the human rights, I believe that our country is a very democratic, liberal, so uh, there shouldn't be no problem. Uh, should shouldn't be no problem to that. But if we violate some rights, I believe that the security of our na of our nation is the most important for us and for all the civilians in our country. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Why not? 
Am I allowed to stand here or do I have to come to the center? Well, the thing is, you won't be on the camera. Ah, the camera. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm confused. I thought we were on the radio before. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, what job do you want? Who do you want to be? Secretary. Kind of Lisa. I'll take CEO of Emra. CEO of Emra. Emra. <laughs> this is quite a funny sorry. question for you, then. Um, it's lovely to have you. Yeah, congratulations on getting out of prison. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Thank How you. can we eliminate poverty in the world? <laughs> well, to begin with, of course, we must simply say, well, poverty amongst the world. We can see clearly that this is one of the most problems that we actually have to deal with because we have these third world countries that are, that are age-ridden, have less money, and all these problems that we must deal with. But the real question, and I think the essence of this question actually is, where are we going to allocate this money from? Because in the society which we live in, which I believe most of us can actually sit here and agree today, that what it comes down to is the dollar amount that it's going to cost. Now, of course, being the businessman that I am, I see uh, the capitalist side of this and how it is that we're actually going to raise the uh, various funds that we need to to um, actually help those in poverty in those in these third world countries. Um, but of course, you must keep in mind the capitalist society that we live in. It's key. But we must allocate funds in some way, shape, or form so that we can actually help these third world countries. And of course, come up with some sort of uh, electoral decision and a group of bodies come in and study the various problems and have to do research and so forth. In this area, then of course, we can actually come up with a clear, concise problem as to what actually is poverty. Clear and concise. Thank you very much. <laughs> Time for one more. Oh, okay. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to be Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan. That's fine. Um, what are you? What are we going to do about the problems in Myanmar? Myanmar. Okay. The situation there at the moment is very critical because it's central in the region. The region is located and the regions that are around it, and we need to ensure the stability of that region, or else um, the uh, the Asian re regions around it will be stable, and then we'll have um, we can that can turn into a haven for terrorists, which will which will go further the um, instability. On top of that, um, the poverty rate is pretty low, and the living conditions are not good. So until we um, increase that and sufficiently help them, that the, the whole threat will not be reduced. So um, first, I think the first thing we're going to have to hit is the, um, the rebels that are forming over there and the opposition to the government. Because if they're, um, that is the key aspect to the instability, first of all. Um, second of all, we have to cater to the general um, civilians' needs for basic medical care and living uh, conditions, uh, schooling for children because the children are are the they're the stones of our they're the future of our society and if they are corrupted if they are hit right from the start if they get taken over by these terrorists then um, we're, we'll just have another um, we'll just have another Afghanistan. So, Gerald, that's all we have time for for another okay. week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Gerald, I think you say children are our future that actually sparked the debate in God, so we all have to go outside and pray and realize that. It's one of those words. I did not call to get early here. Yeah, he looks great. Right, let's 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 move let's move on to some arguments. The best way to do this is simple, and that is to start by you guys coming up with a case. Okay? Um, so like, as if there was a debate, I'm going to give you prep time, 20 minutes, an emotion, and in pairs, you're going to be first prop teams. But you won't have to give the speech, at least not yet. Maybe in about two hours, one of you. Um, but prepare as if you were going to give the speech. Um, so we want a policy, right? You need, you need to define it, what you would do exactly, and arguments. A set of arguments. And try how many would you normally come up with if you were a team? How many would you try to? Uh, three. Three both speakers? Five. Two one. You say five. Five for what? Five five for what? Five between you. Yeah, over the two speakers. You'd have you'd have three. Yeah. Well, we, 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 for one. No. 
Nu ai să fac cu altul să vină. Well, you need a definition, um, and just like you would normally prepare for a debate, if in 15 minutes you're ready to stand up and speak, uh, then then you're ready. Uh, whatever you normally do. Okay.
she's actually a We assume that the woman can be a She's a woman in
But they are allowed to be deployed for non hostile front line yeah. fighting. Not not for fighting, they're allowed to, to be there for support. So that's not really the front line. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're not fighting. They're not fighting. They're just not. So, but the motion was this house yeah. to let women fight on the front line. Yeah. yeah. No. And it's allowing to directly engage in yeah. military combat yeah. and be deployed hostile But when asked the question, can they fight on the front line, you would say no, they can be on the front line, but only support. I know. We are talking about the, the situation in the USA now. They're Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about the situation in the USA now as well, but can, <coughs> can they, can you give a straight answer, can they actually fight on the front line? In the US? Yes. In the real life, in the real life, in our plan. Yeah. In our plan. Yeah. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. They can. But they not in hostile environments. What? But they can before in hostile environments. They can now. Yeah, yeah. In our plan, they can, but in the real life. They can't, in, in other words, they can't send a woman in to say, you need to kill this person, or you need to kill them. Now they can't. They now cannot, they can't. In the status quo? No, that's true. They're not allowed yes. to go in yeah. and like, say, you have to kill these people. Yeah. This one says that they would be allowed to engage in this hostile type of military operation. Right. Now it all becomes clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's clear. When you were talking, you were talking about the status quo, not your plan. My plan is to allow the women. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Cool. Good. <laughs> then we don't have a problem. That's great. Is that, um, so that is, is that different to these guys or those guys? Not, not no, them. Actually. That's true. To, to make it clear that it's hostile military operations, because women are, are allowed to be close to the fighting, but they're just not allowed to be sent in for a specific mission to kill. Correct. Right, so you're being really clear about what you're changing. Yeah. Exactly. That's because good. they are allowed to fight, and uh, like if they're attacked. Um, especially in Iraq because of insurgents, there is no clear front line yeah. in this uh, type of war today. Yeah. They are allowed to engage the enemy. <coughs> they are allowed to be sent into military operations where they do be engaged. Great, okay, that's great. Fantastic. Uh, that's very clear and good. Okay, so that's definitions out of the way. Um, I'm going to go with the slightly more conventional approach that doesn't rely on the US having invaded already, if that's okay, so we're going to stick with that sort of, a, sort of an approach. Um, what we need now is a main argument, your big number one top argument that you would make from a few different teams. So you guys, what, what, was, your, what was your top one? Uh, we kind of twisted in the equal opportunity issue. So, uh, Just tell me the line. Uh, uh, equal opportunities for all. Right, equal opportunities for all. What's your number one? Why? They should be allowed to build their operations. Okay, build their obligations to society. I mean state. Uh, sorry? State. Um, state. 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 What, what are their obligations to the What are the obligations to the state? Well, we're thinking of it as more of a principal issue, like citizens have an obligation to the state, and the state has an obligation to the citizens, and they're not allowed to be by the country, they're not allowed to participate in that. Okay, that's a nice argument. Uh, what, what do you guys have? We have promote equality. Equality, thank you. Thank you. The economy of sexes. The quality of the sexes. Uh, uh, actually, we have all these arguments and also the room to fight with their husband. Okay, well, what's your first argument? Your big top argument? Uh, your number one argument? It doesn't matter the physical strength today because the way of uh, how people are worrying has changed and the main of our society is democracy, that everyone has the right to choose what he wants. Okay, they're two different arguments. Physical strength, yeah. the right to choose are two totally different things. You mustn't make them one argument. Okay. We're only looking for the one argument. Sometimes it's democracy, you have the right to choose what you want. That's your number one. Yeah. Okay, good. Right to choose, yeah. Our society is different. We say that it promotes equality, but that is a kid as the US, you know, allowing women to fight on the front line. That's a symbolic gesture for other countries to follow us. So that we get kind of bigger impact. Your, num your number one argument is a symbolic gesture. Yes. Ooh, that's really interesting. Um, that's unusual. As a, as a number one, uh, mm -hmm. that's necessarily wrong. But because it promotes the equality. Like we're still within that, we get the you know the equality argument. Yes. Just saying it's a symbolic that it, being that the United States would be the one to do it would be a symbolic gesture to other nations to do the same. So therefore, we kind of get larger impacts that will stem off of that argument. Okay. So explain. Yeah. We had an argument really similar to that. It's basically like America's being. Pretty much hypocritical. Yeah. 
yeah, their hypocrisy okay, is that they go into Iraq, yeah, they go into Iraq and they say, give your women the equal rights to men, and the Iraqis can plainly state that America doesn't give their equal rights to men and women. That's a really interesting argument. It's not your number one, though, is it? No. No, okay, we're just going to stick with the process just now, because it's good to hear what people's top argument is and see if there's consensus. What was yours? Well, our equal opportunity, we're specifically saying we're reducing the naturalistic nature of law right now, because if women, the, the war is to protect the land, and therefore if it's only men that are protecting land, that's inferring that the, men, the land only belongs to the men. Okay. And that makes the women the property of the men, because the men are protecting the women. Okay, thank you. Um, well, what did you guys say? Um, we found the degree genders, and both guys are bearing in mind the house of the United States. Uh, while they're moving genders, we both bear in mind the fact that there's certain things that both sexes can do with the Okay. A lot of you have equality. I don't know from absolutely everyone, I don't think. A lot of you have equality. The, this argument's very interesting um, because it's sending a good message, the idea that it promotes something good in the world. What does that presuppose? What do you have to already think to accept his argument? We have to prove before that this thing is good. Okay. And how do you do that? A couple of arguments before. Well, your equality argument, right, first. So what you're hoping to do is wrap your equality argument in the message. You're going to say, this sends a good message to the world because um, America is very important in the world and and that's where you hit your equality argument. So you're hoping to wrap it up. So I'm not, I'm not looking to diminish what you're doing. But most people find it most obvious if you take them a step at a time. And what you're doing is, the last step, here's my, here's my last step, and now I'm going to tell you how I got the way over there by arguing you some other things. Okay? Not wrong, not necessarily wrong, but definitely most people, I think, in a room, and most ordinary people who listen to debate, like to be walked yes. step by step. So you're doing something brave and different. So it's kind of something to weigh up. Yeah. But we can uh, uh, use even the argument like discriminating the woman because they are weak. Sorry? The discrimination yeah. of the woman because they are weak. It's a good thing. Uh, no, but we can use that argument too. Because most of, of uh, they are saying, okay, women cannot go on the front line because they are weaker and they cannot uh, do this job. So what is your argument? Is good? No, it's bad. That's What's your sentence? I think that's more than that. You just said the word discrimination. I'm sorry, I'm not at the moment following what your argument is. The argument is that the status quo discriminates against women, and we believe we should change that. Why is that bad then? Discrimination is bad. Discrimination is bad. Okay, we've not established Negative that yet. Discrimination. Okay. Negative discrimination is bad. Oh, all sorts of points. If 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 I'm a, if I run a theatre and I'm putting on a production of Hamlet, uh, and I want a lead role, and I say no women, is that bad? Should I let women apply for the role? Well, no. Shakespeare had many women's roles. Okay. But if you are an artist, you are preparing the Maybe you are, how to say, mixing the uh, rims from the Hamlet. You are making rims. Yeah, but should men be allowed to play for women's football teams? No. <laughs> should men be able to take part in the 100 meters for women? No, that's not fair because men already have their own categories. When there's, yeah. there's already equal well, categories, then you're just switching around. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Why is there going to be separate? Yeah. Isn't that the yeah. most like yeah. a loaded yeah. question? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that a question then <laughs> in which whatever we answer, oh, sorry, we have... Yeah. Guys, please, 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 it's only fair that we have one... This room is too small to have five discussions going on, but we'll, go, we'll hear from you guys. When you, when you ask that question, whatever I answer, it will look me wrong. It will seem that I said the wrong thing. No, that's was, was yeah. that? If you ask, why is men not allowed to run, what, is it unfair? for men not allowed to run 100 meters with women, or vice versa. So what can I say on that? Well, what do you think? Uh, what do people think? Who has the who have things to write? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is unfair right now, because the current... Did you ask, is it unfair? No. I ask because if you say it is unfair, other side can say, well, they also, all, the, both of them have categories. So how is that? Unfair 
But if you said it's uh, not a, uh, it's fair. If you say it's fair, ah, I got lost. Okay, no problem. Let's try refer. Let's try and work out. They can report to you whatever you say. My question, my question is, um, can we just say? All discrimination is unfair. There is no legitimate discrimination. No, we can't. No. Or, or are there, I think maybe we can. Maybe we can, but some people we can't. It's arguable. You have to make the argument. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think that uh, it's uh, not fair to let men uh, run women on 100 meters because they will probably always win because they are a lot faster. For example, I have seen the skiing competition. Uh, I think it was in Zara, and the uh, first rider was a uh, brother of Jan Sapostlach, I don't know if you heard of her, uh, the one of uh, women, she is yeah. yeah. An average male skier. Okay. Yes, and uh, he was the first driver with uh, his skipping cam on the head, so he uh, can show the, uh, the, the look, of the, look of the track, look of the road, and he was not competing, and after they all, they were all competing, Turkey, the uh, women's here were competing and after they all finished he was better than than them for two seconds and he just uh, normally he was not reactively okay. driving at that time yeah, but okay, okay. 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 Let, let's uh, i realize there's we can have a huge discussion going over many minutes the, 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 the lesson from that is everything even discrimination is bad has to be argued specifically okay. as for this issue yeah because it might be sometimes acceptable to exclude some groups of people from something. Is it on this or something new? No, I was going to ask, how would you define when discrimination would be bad? Well, I, that's kind of a question for you guys. I mean, that's, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> I mean, for. yeah, I can yeah. try and define this. Or... Uh, the, the general process would be either we think that all discrimination is wrong always, always, Okay, that could be one line. Second line could be, we accept that under these sorts of circumstances, and name a couple, it can be in principle right to only accept from one gender and not from another, but we think that this is not one of those situations because, and same why it's different, okay? Being in the army is like any other job, or, you know, something. You know, something that justifies why in principle, there is a distinction between those two categories of things. Okay? But this is good, but the, the big picture here is you've got a lot of principle arguments, and that is our first type of argument. Okay? The first type of argument you cannot do now are arguments about principle. If there is no argument or principle in your case anywhere, then that is just a mistake. It is never something to leave out principle altogether. Because it asks the fundamental question that people care about, which is why would I do this in an ideal world? Why should I even be interested in your topic? Why should I care about your, all the other things you tell me? It's got to be because you believe it's the right thing to do, or at least an acceptable thing to do. So that's our first type of argument, <coughs> principle. Okay. Um, what I'd like now is some more arguments, different types of arguments that you have. Um, did anyone have stuff about how this would actually work? Sorry? Did anyone have arguments about how this would actually work? No. No. Oh, you're in the army. Yeah. We have something. It's, I find it's like more options for the commander because women saw their uh, natural differences. Can commanders can use different tactics? So if you see, if you see like a woman in like some kind of undercover mission of the army walking around the street. So she can erect, mask herself or around the hide or the weapon that men can do. The men would really stand out and not the woman. So it's really giving the commanders more options. Okay, fair enough, more options. Uh, any others? <coughs> yes? More soldiers? Okay, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. Hold that thought, though. We'll come back to that. Yeah. The men will be uh, happier because their wives could go to war. They like that. Yeah. Yeah. The men will also number of rapes in the war. The number of Okay. Okay. All right. Well, believe me, it wasn't her to win during the war. Oh, okay. Maybe if there was a with them, they would have been. Let me try and make it. Let me. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let me try to make a distinction now between two, two areas. It's one area which is just, can this actually work? Okay. First opposition are likely to suggest that this will, call, this will, this will just never work in practice, that it's impossible, that it's unthinkable. Okay. Um, that the, the army won't accept it. That um, it will lose, it will lead to uh, morale uh, being lower. That it will cause operational problems. Okay, sort of very direct difficulties with actually implementing the policy. Okay, and some of these things that you're talking about are fall into that category. Okay, now there's another set of things which are sort of broader consequences. The ones we're talking about right now are quite direct. Yeah, they're quite immediate. They're to do with implementation of the policy, and they're good points. So that's that's sort of your second your second type of argument that you're you're coming up with is practicalities. Can this actually be done? Let's move debates for a second. You know, prostitution debates. You've probably had one or heard arguments for one at some point this week. Should prostitution be legalised, uh, or should drugs be legalised? Change that. Should drugs be legalised? And sometimes proposition will say, okay, we're going to have a scheme where you can buy drugs, but only very small amounts, only in licensed chemists, only when you come and show three types of ID, put your name on a register to show that you've only had a small amount of drugs every, uh, every month, and you have regular health testing or something. You know, they put a hundred conditions in, okay? And opposition can say, who's going to buy their drugs there? You know, how is this policy actually going to work if people just ignore the system and if the black market is still vibrant and exists? Okay, it's a practical, it's a practical problem with that model. Now, this this solution may have practical problems. Your one has a practical problem that the Americans aren't in uh, That's that's a problem for you guys, right? A practical problem. Um, you guys have. Maybe other problems, okay? But that's that was good because that's what you were just talking about. Who has the third type of argument about consequences, the product of what you're going to produce in the long run? Yeah. Yeah, the consequences in society, the destroying of stereotypes, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the other one is. Do you want to explain that first one? Destroying of what stereotypes? Yeah, the stereotypes that women are not as capable as men. Uh, during the war, uh, uh, that they are not able to defend themselves, and with that, with this policy, when they will be allowed to fight in the front line, the, uh, the people people start to believe that uh, that they are as capable as men during the war. Okay. Um, we need more consequences, but I'm told it's break, so um, we'll have more consequences over the break. Oh, by the way, I need to make an announcement real quick. Um, we're gonna try the moral. It will increase the moral of the woman in the army because when because the woman in the army, they, when you enter the army, you assume that you can fight. So if you if you if the woman is denied to fight and. Uh, the basic principle behind the army is to fight. So she, she could get uh, she could get demoralized and feel discriminated. So by allowing them to fight, they will feel more equal and that will support them to be more that will encourage them to be more efficient. Morale will rise, so people will be more efficient. Um, morale will rise and especially morale among the women in the army will rise. Right. Because now they feel like lesser to the men because okay. they can fight. Okay, thank you. Can you say anything more? Yeah, that's what I just said. Morale will rise, essentially, especially among women in the army. That's, that's the argument. We just got, we got the elaborated version, which is great. Uh, any other consequences? Yes. Uh, with the breaking down of the dichotomy of sexes with regards to the sociological impacts that will occur upon well, not only the country implementing this plan, but as well as the world as a whole, uh, depending on whether or not this country is a world power, is seeing as how they're actually going to take upon this, and that hopefully if they're favored within the world, other countries will see this as something that they may want to do in the future. Okay, show of hands, who understands that? Okay. 
Okay, you need to relabel it. I'm sure it's very intelligent. You need to come up with some words that mean things to people. So, <laughs> <laughs> what can we call that? Sending is that, I'm, I really don't know. I actually didn't understand. So just try again. Try, just try and simplify it for idiots like me. Uh, okay. Okay. Basically, it's saying um, that we are going to send a message. This message is that we do not discriminate based upon sex. Okay. That we are going to treat everyone as equals. We all have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And if you wish to fulfill this pursuit of happiness and go fight the war, just because you're a woman, we're not going to stop you from doing it. Beautiful. Is that a consequence? Is this something that is going to change as a result of the policy, or is it a reason for doing the policy? Both. Both. Okay, explain the way in which it's a consequence of the policy. Because by implementing this policy, we're now giving women the ability to fight, and as a result of this, this actually shows for those that actually seek to um, actually participate in this, it will pretty much um, how to put this. And now it's 10.7.4. We would like to give you pretty much. It will be almost the equivalent of the first professional women's baseball player right. when that happens. Great. Good example. Fantastic example. That was great, by the way. Second time around, fantastic. Yeah. Um, one other consequence would be that it would encourage women to be more politically active. Like war heroes are um, seen as better congressmen sometimes because they don't change women. That's a fantastic argument. I have thought within the American context, yeah. obviously within the British context, not at all, but um, there some countries where military career is a very important route to politics, obviously the power is in politics. Hmm. That's a fascinating idea. Yeah. Increase troops number. Increase the number of troops. Yeah. Very basic but very true. Yeah. It will make the women Yes, sir. 
Well, uh, we have something that we believe might uh, change the outcome of the entire world. Uh, this is something that might come as, out of the, as a joke, but this is something that has never been tried. So basically, we would encourage women to step in the front line, topless, in the front line, to at this point. Uh, uh, a lot of our enemies, male enemies, will be stunned, temporarily dazzled, and uh, we have to have the time shooting fire against those men. <laughs> so how can you ensure that those guys aren't going to shoot women, although they are topless, you know? You cannot ensure that. So if Americans... <laughs> 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 he is very keen to try because he isn't a woman, so he won't respect. America is safe against everyone except misogynists and homosexuals. <laughs> that's your point. That's crazy. <laughs> It might sound like a joke, because this was the only thing you said that made sense. Yeah, that's, you, you can't run that argument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and women will I think it's probably, not agree. it's probably fair to assume that armies are trained beyond the point of being able to be distracted by it. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Guys, 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 guys. Um, any other consequences? <laughs> any other consequences that are uh, um, Yes. Uh, either of you. Yeah. So. Um, we'll gain the female perspective of what war is like and what it's like to be on the front line. Why is that valuable? Um, one example would be therapy. Um, in general, women are um, better at expressing their emotions and feelings, so we'll be able to improve <coughs> therapy when soldiers come back from war. How? Because women are, um, in general, better at expressing their emotions and what they're feeling, and so we'll be able to um, gain that knowledge and be able to apply it. To what? To therapy. Or who? Uh, women and men. Returning from war. Returning from war. Okay. But you, if they don't go to war, then they don't need therapy. But they need therapy anyway. Right. And women will give us a perspective on war. Well, they, won't give a, they won't give you a man's perspective on war. No, that he was a huge...